Hello there, welcome to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another filter from Marina. Now Marina are like a subsidiary of the Hagen Group who also market the Fluval filters. So this is effectively their budget line. And this one is the Marina CF40. Now there really are no frills whatsoever with this filter. As I said, it is a budget filter. I'll put links to it in the video description, check it out. You might be quite surprised at the price of it. I know I was. Um, so if you're interested in it, by the end of this video, check out the links in the video description. So, according to Marina, the CF40 is suitable for tanks up to 150 litres or 40 US gallons. And the flow rate is given as 757 litres per hour or 200 gallons per hour. That doesn't sound like a lot of flow, but there is quite a few filters out there that don't have much flow. You know, the classic series from Eheim, for example. Um, they're relatively big filters, but they don't shift a lot of water compared to some of the canister filters out there. However, there are things vastly more important than flow rate, and that is what comes with it, how it's set up, and how it can be set up to work properly. Ultimately, the guts of the filter are the most important thing. Ooh, that's better. I always forget that. Right, let's get this thing out of the box. I'll take the top off and I'll explain how the water flows through it. And I will tell you if I think the setup is any good before we do anything to it. Before I get the top off here, I've got to thank Danny for sending me this filter. I forgot to mention that at the start. I forget a lot of stuff. Okay, so this filter is basically round. It's like a cylinder, but there is like a scallop sort of shape taken out of here, which reduces the overall volume of it. It's three clips on the top. One, two, and three. Plastic is cheap, but okay. It's got an inny and an outy. A bit here, you can unscrew to top this all up with water before you set it away to make sure it primes properly. If it doesn't prime properly and it's whirring on and making a bit of a noise, just like all canister filters, just gently rock it backwards and forwards with the pump running and that should clear the air and spit it out. All right, quite a big pump head there. And here we've got the in pipe which marries up with that. That sends the water all the way down to the bottom of the filter. It then rises up through the trays and through this pipe, it's drawn out and spat back to the tank. So it's basically a bottom up filter. I'll just take these trays out and then I'll explain exactly what is in them. This is how they are recommended to be set up by Marina. bear in mind that the water flows from bottom to top. So ideally in the bottom we want to see all of the foams and the fine pad. But all we have is a coarse pad. There's enough room for at least another pad on top of there as well. Next tray we've got a huge bag of carbon and obviously if you were going to use that you would take it out of the bag, well, out of the plastic bag, and leave it in the mesh bag. So we're basically going mechanical, chemical, and then that's the top one, more mechanical, because we've got the fine pad there. And then on top of the fine pad, we've got some beautifully designed plastic balls. There's actually some that won't fit in there. Because of the shape of this, you, you just cannot squeeze any more in there. There's basically no mechanical filtration. So I'll take these things out of here and I'll show you how I would advise you to set it up if you didn't want to buy any more media or any more pads or anything like that. If you just wanted to set it up with the stuff that comes with this filter, here's how you would do it. Right, we'll concentrate on the bottom tray first. So water comes up, it's gonna hit the coarse pad. There's not really room for a medium pad on top of there. 
if we want to use the fine pad also. So the fine pad would go on there, but you can see a problem. We've got a hole there which marries up with that, so we do actually have to cut a new fine pad to go in the bottom. I'll just put that in for the time being just so you can get an idea of where the fine pad should go. It needs a new one though, it needs to be cut. Next tray up. Would be biological. That is woefully inadequate. And then the next tray up would be the chemical because we always go mechanical, biological, chemical. Don't always need to use chemical. In fact, I would advise not to use chemical. If you've only got three trays, you really want to go mechanical and then all biological. Biological filtration is way more important than chemical filtration. So that's how you would set it up with the gear that comes with it. Bear in mind though, because of that, you ideally want to either fill that little hole with floss or cut a new pad. So what can we do with these trays to allow the filter to function properly and hopefully manage a normal tank of up to 150 litres? Well, we can put the mechanical filtration all in the bottom. That would basically be our sponges. And then above that, we could go biological. Because of the shape of these trays, it's not really conducive to putting big media in there. So I'm actually going to go with a small media called Bio Gravel. It's basically made of exactly the same stuff as the Bio Home, but it's, it's made to be a porous gravel. So it maxes out the space in really awkward shaped filters. And I would class this one as an awkward shape because I've just cut a fine pad for the bottom of here and it was an awful shape to cut out. So let's bring the camera back in. I'll talk you through exactly what I've done and then we'll jump back out. I'll explain how much media is in here and I'll give my recommendations for the size of tank that this filter would be suitable for. Just a little quick note on this grill that goes on the top here. When this is fitted inside the filter, it's pretty difficult to get in and actually lift this top tray out. So I would advise just sticking the point of some scissors in there, prying that open, and that allows you to get to that handle. And when you've got media as small as this in here, this handle is very important because the last thing you want is this media all over your carpet. So, I've got one, two trays of bio gravel. and one tray of mechanical filtration. So this is our bottom tray. Water comes up, it goes through the coarse pad, and then it goes through the fine pad. There isn't room for the normal coarse, medium, and fine, but considering the size of the tanks that this is recommended for, I don't think that's a problem. You know, you're gonna catch a lot of muck in that coarse pad because it's not super coarse. It's somewhere between coarse and medium. And then you've got the fine pad, which is going to ensure that the water is clean before it moves up into the media. So that's our mechanical filtration, followed by 800 grams, or two, ooh, roughly two pounds, of bio media, which is the bio gravel, followed by another 800 grams or roughly two pounds of bio gravel. So in total, we've got 1.6 kilos or probably just under four pounds of bio gravel into here, which is a pretty good return for such a small filter. Then we have the grill that goes on the top and we're ready to rebuild the filter. So the first one that goes in is the mechanical filtration followed by biological. That's it, just give those a wiggle to make sure that they go in properly. Followed by another biological. 
And remember, if you wanted to use chemical, it would go in that top tray. Then the grill goes on, and then the top can go on. Just like that. So 1.6 kilos of media would make this one easily handle 150 litres or what was it in gallons or 40 gallons. No problem, you know, and that is for a full cycle on a normally stocked tank. If the tank was heavily stocked, you could halve that down to 75 litres or 20 US gallons. But, oh man, I mean, yeah, for the price, and for how much it holds, this is quite an exceptional buy. Plus, you've got the power of Hagen behind it, so you know that the spares are always going to be available, that after sales care is going to be good. Although, I did go through the Amazon reviews, and somebody's actually given this one star. I'll just read this out. There is, you know, a lot of four stars and five stars. People saying it's basically cheap, but exceptionally good. Hopefully what we've done has made it much better and allowed it to actually function how it should. But where's the one star one? There it is. Uh, after two hours of fighting to put this piece of crap together, we plug it in and nothing. No water pumping, no noise, no nothing. It's a double negative. We pl we unplug it, take it apart, do it all again and nothing. Now I have a 65 gallon tank with no filtration because this thing was dead on arrival. Do not waste your money. There is no website to turn to. Their instructions are a joke and there's nothing online about this product. You suck marina. Well, the instructions that were supplied were actually okay. It does show you how to put this thing together as far as what goes where on the box and if you're buying a filter which is rated for up to 40 gallons for a 65 gallon tank even if this thing was working properly the chances are you're not going to get the results that you're after you've got to buy filters that are the right size for your tank you know as a rule of thumb basically if something says I don't know it's good for up to 300 litres you can halve that down to 150 litres Really, you would always halve what the filter said it would filter up to. So say you had a, I don't know, a 406 or 407 or something that said it would filter up to 400 litres. If you halve that down to 200 litres, so you buy, say, a 406 or something for a 200 litre tank, you'll not be far off because it'll hold enough media to support the fish and to give you good results as far as the water quality goes. If you buy a filter, for a 65 gallon tank that's only rated up to 40 gallons, you're never going to be happy. It isn't going to work how it should. Chances are your fish will just basically die in their own excrement. You've got to go with the correctly sized filters for your tank. And hopefully that's what I'm doing with this series. I'm working my way through all the filters to try and give you an idea of the capabilities of each one and also give you a, a bit of a rundown of how well made it is. This one for the price is pretty well made. Obviously it's not up there with the, the very expensive filters although the, the Eheim Pro 4 series are very expensive and they're crap. The Fluval, they're expensive but they are good. Marina is the budget line if you're looking for something to filter a tank and hold a reasonable amount of media to keep your fish happy and keep the water good and you don't have a lot of money to spend, this is the way to go. Spend the money on the media, that's the most important thing. If, if you didn't want to buy the bio gravel or any of the bio home products, a good alternative to the bio gravel would be Eheim Substrat Pro. It's still a reasonably expensive media, but it is pretty porous and it will allow you to pack that out efficiently because it is a small ball shaped media. I know the biohome's not available in every country so that would be my recommendation as an alternative. Okay so you've heard what I think of this filter, you've seen how it should be set up, you've heard my recommendations as to what size a tank it would be suitable for. If you want to buy it 
or you want to find out more information, check out the links in the video description and in the pinned comment. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, share it wherever you want, and I'll see you next time.